Welcome to WB Engineering Tutorials. This is how to revolve a cut or solid using Autodesk Inventor 2010. Okay, so we're going to start off where we left on the last tutorial, which is how to extrude a simple solid. We're going to use the cylinder that we extruded in the last tutorial in order to revolve a cut. And I'm also going to show you a similar technique where we're actually going to just revolve a solid. So, let's go ahead and start. So, in order to actually start adding or subtracting material from a part, we need to start from a sketch. It needs to know what it's going to add or subtract, right? So, what I'm going to do is actually create a 2D sketch. And then there's two steps to creating a sketch. You have to first activate the command, then tell it where you want to place the sketch, right? So, I have, as you can see, the command activated. As you can tell by my cursor, it has a what looks like a piece of paper and a pencil next to it. I'm going to choose my plane, which in my case I'm going to choose the XY plane because that's the front, as you can see here. So I'm going to choose front, XY plane. So you can see that now I have an origin that goes through the XY plane and through my part. So this is where I'm going to be sketching my, uh, my um, closed loop in order to revolve it. So what I'm going to do is going to get the, uh, the line and I'm going to show you uh, a little trick here. So as you notice, if I start sketching something, I can't tell what's happening on the middle there. So what I want to do is actually go to the view, and I want to slice graphics. Once I slice the graphics, you'll notice that it did not edit the actual part. But what it did was it actually sliced it momentarily or temporarily so that I can actually use a nice smooth surface to sketch on. Not only that, I can actually see what I'm sketching. As you can see as I hover over the edges, you can still see that the geometry still exists, but it's just suppressed at this point. Now I want to go back to the sketch tab in order to create my sketch. So, let's assume I want to start making my sketch. You notice that my sketch isn't snapping to anything. I don't have anything to snap to. So, the only thing, though I made this pretty close, if I zoom in, you notice that I'm not actually snapping to the edge there. The only constraints that I have are the ones that I have already pre-existing in my settings, which are perpendicular, horizontal, vertical, parallel, perpendicular again. So those are the ones that I have. Also, you have you know apparent intersection, stuff like that. Um, what I want to do, though, is have some geometry to work off of, right? So I don't want to just guesstimate where the edges are. So in order to do that, I want to go to project edges. Now there's two types. There's project geometry, which we're not going to use in this case, or project cut edges, which we are going to use in this case because we did cut some edges. Once we do that, now I have a nice way to snap onto the edges here. You notice that every time I put my cursor over an edge, which was projected, it actually snaps to it. So I can assure myself that I'm actually making a closed loop. So let me just choose an arc just to give this some kind of variety. Once I do that, now I'm going to do something where we also have another option and I'll tell you the two different ways to do it. But for right now what I want to do is activate my line command again and I want to change my format over here to center line. It's mostly just for aesthetics it does help when you start getting into complex um, drawings. Um, this format will become helpful, you know, construction lines, etc., uh, when you start to make more complex drawings in the future. So do do take note of what you want to do and what format you want to put it in. So now I'm going to exit the sketch. Once I exit the sketch, you can see that the other side of the cylinder comes back. What I want to do is select my revolve, and when I revolve, as you noticed in the first tutorial, um, it automatically chose a closed profile to extrude. Well, in this case, now we have options. We actually have four options. We have four closed loops from the sketch that we just created. So what I'm going to do is select the, the profiles that I want, one by one, and then at that point, I need to select the axis that I want to revolve it around. Now I have two options. I have the sketch that I made here. And then I also have, since I've made my drawing symmetrical to the origin, I also have the, the y-axis as well.
All right, so let me just stick with the y-axis just to show you that we have those two options. And then at this point we have just like the regular extrusion, we have different options that we can do. Join, which is actually create a solid. Cut, which is pretty obvious, just cut some material off. And then intersection, which uh, creates kind of a, an abstract piece of geometry out of this, which I'll show in a, a later tutorial. So then you also have your options here where it's uh, how, wh what kind of revolve do you want to do to a certain angle, which is pretty self-explanatory, whatever angle you put in there. And you have your options, just like the regular extrusion, you can go either side or to mid-plane. Alright, so let's say we just wanted to stick to full. That'll give us the full thing. So we don't want to make a join. That'll just add material to an already existing cylinder. What we want to do is actually cut. We hit OK. And then now we have our cut from our existing cylinder. Now, as another option, what we could do is instead of doing the two steps that we did in the first tutorial and the second tutorial, what we can do now is just create a sketch, and I'll show you another way of actually doing this. What you want to do is, well, let's go back to View, Slice Graphics, Sketch, Project Geometry. The only reason why I did that is just so I have something to snap to, that way I get you know somewhat similar geometry as the one that we uh, we have already existing. Now obviously this is just me guesstimating about what size it is. It might not be exactly the same. <clears throat> but as you notice I use the lines the line command in order to create this entire thing. Let me hit finish here. Revolve. Pick the profile. Pick the axis. Now I have something that's very similar. Obviously if I would have uh, dimensioned it, it could have been exactly the same. But that's uh, your two options to create very similar parts. Um, so there's many ways to skin a cat. These are just two. Thanks again for watching WB Engineering Tutorials and I'll see you again soon for the next one.